Hey there, Dan Goes 2 here. Today's video is about installing the longitudinals for the plywood composite boat and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. It's been quite a while since I've worked on building this boat for a handful of reasons, but I'll show you where it's up to and what I've got to do next. The last video I think I filmed, I was doing these pace and butt joins to put the two bits of ply for the longitudinals together. These are all done now and they really just slot in, you drop them in. Apologies for not filming dropping them in, but they're essentially slotted like this, so it's pretty straightforward. But what has happened, and what was actually the beginning of me sort of slowing up on this a little bit, is on the other side, I'll show you, there are sections where it's a fair bit too low. and it was actually tricky to fix in any way because it's high enough here and if I lift this up the top comes too high. I measured these two, I laid them on top of each other, they're symmetrical, they're identical, doesn't matter where I put them left or right and I couldn't actually really figure out what was going on. I also had that problem where some of the timber is getting a bit warped and it all added up to a bit of a feeling of mm, this isn't going so well. I don't think that's really true. Yes, it's not perfect, but everything I've read and everything I've been told says that stitch and glue boat building is pretty forgiving. It's not like joinery, you know, it doesn't have to be millimeter perfect for it to be a perfectly good boat. So I think maybe I sort of let myself get down about it when I didn't need to. What we're gonna to do today is just tack all the longitudinals in position, particularly to the transom here that's still just resting. That way it's all ready for us to put the hull on the boat, the sheets, the large sheets of ply that are going to skin the hull. In order to make the hull I also need to loft them all and join them all, butt join them all. I've done videos on both those techniques so I'm not going to repeat that process. I'll just do one video per technique and then once I've got them all made we'll put them on because that's a new part of the build process, a new technique. To tack these longitudinals in place, I'm going to be using a hot glue gun. A hot glue gun's great for this kind of thing because it doesn't take long for it to set, so you can sort of hold it in place, put the glue on, wait a while, even sort of put a fan or blow on it. It'll set pretty fast. It's a bit like having a third hand sort of thing, so that's what we'll be doing. The transom, which we made in a previous video, I think the only thing I've done since is just put some epoxy in all the old screw holes, which I'll sand down later on. The transom here is currently sitting on these supports that hold it in place. It was a little bit low, so I've just put some blocks here to raise it up slightly, just so that the top here, all these heights match. And then the heights under here match too. The angle is right, but for whatever reason, I could have moved the mount here up a little bit, but it would have meant the screw holes were very close to each other and it was just easier to do the blocks. Next thing I need to do is mark on the transom where I want the longitudinals to touch before I glue them because as well as being warped they sort of move around a little bit. So I just need to make sure they're positioned before I tack them in place. I'm getting these measurements by taking them from the bulkhead at the back here and transferring them to the transom. The bulkhead here is slotted, the transom isn't, so it gives me good reference measurements. I'm also making sure that the measurements port and starboard match each other before I transfer them over. So starting here, you can see I've got a line here, which is where this inside edge of the longitudinal here needs to meet the transom. So I'm just going to bring them in line. Now I've got the clamp here stopping it springing back. I'll go and grab the hot glue gum and we'll just do a few little small sort of spot glue points along here to lock it in place. Hot glue guns are pretty straightforward. The glue comes in these rods that look a little bit like candles, put it in the back and then it just melts it, feed it through with the trigger. So we'll let that heat up a moment. I've put more clamps on now so all the longitudinals are in their correct position. The gun's been heating up for a while so let's lock them in. When I use the glue gun, I'm trying to put a bit of a bead down the corner, a bit like a sort of fillet weld. And the reason for that is because this is only a temporary tack. Down the track, I'm going to need to push epoxy into that gap between the end grain of the longitudinal and the transom as the final way of attaching it before we glass. It's probably also worth mentioning that if you buy one of these hot glue guns, 
Just grab a packet of extra glue as well. They come with a couple of sticks normally when you buy the gun, but you go through it really quickly. Because the bottom edge of the transom is straight, when I tack the bottom edge of the longitudinals, I'm just going to use a square to make sure that it's plumb to that edge. With this longitudinal too, you can see there's a bit of a gap here, and that's actually beneficial. If you have everything really tight, there's no way you're going to get the epoxy in, you'll have a dry join, and it's also a hard join which makes it weaker again. So apparently having these sort of middle or so gaps is really what you're after. If something does butt up hard against it, you're actually better off separating it with a screwdriver before tacking it so you've got the gap for the glue to go in. It's like being attacked by Spider-Man, these hot glue guns. One of the reasons these boats are built on raised jigs like this is so you can get underneath to do some gluing. You'll see a lot more of that when we put the skin of the hull on. Where I've needed to raise the longitudinal slightly off the bulkhead so it's not resting down on it, I've also just done a little bit of hot glue in there to lock it up. Then we'll push all the epoxy into this gap when we finish it all off. Up at the bow here, I've got another little quandary, which is these longitudinals fall low of this bulkhead, this forward bulkhead. So depending on where you have it, you know, they can either be higher or there's a gap. So I'm going to make the bulkhead square to the strong back. And then whatever gap we have here, I might even have a talk to Mark, the designer, about it, but I'll lay the skin over, we'll see where it touches. I'll either shape this bulkhead to match here, or we'll be filling this section with epoxy. Not sure which way we'll go yet, but what I'm going to do is lock it in perpendicular first, and then we'll deal with that problem later. One of the other reasons for using these hot glue guns is that they're not particularly permanent. If you do need to jiggle something later, you can kind of crack the glue off, move it, and then pin it back in position again. Nowhere near as permanent as the epoxy is going to be. Just going to use a reasonably large roofing square to get this plumb. And just check both sides. Alright, we'll lock this off here. Okay, that's all the longitudinal is in position now. I'm going to talk to Mark about the front here because that's what worries me the most. The other gaps I think are going to be fine. I think what I'll be asking really is what do you favour? When you're building this boat, at the end of the day, the outside hull shape is all that really matters. What happens inside just needs to be strong. So I'll have a chat to him about the best way to go and I'll let you know what the result is. Okay, before this frame's ready for the skin to go on, there's one last thing I have to do, and that's to put a temporary bow section in. I'll show you that. It's a section shaped like this, and it'll go on to the front like this. This gives you the profile of the stem that we'll be stitching the sheets of the hull against, but I'm not gonna put that on to the very end because it'll be sticking out in the workshop and someone's bound to walk into it. So I'm gonna leave that off for now, but that's the last thing we need to put on before we can start skinning this hull. Well, thanks for watching. Sorry I didn't make huge progress on this. I'm actually still nowhere near well and I can't really lift a full sheet of ply, so I can't do the hull just yet. But hopefully it gives you a bit of an update of where that project's at. And I definitely will, when I get better, start working on it more and more. I'm also gonna be uploading a second video soon after this one which is simply a section from a previous video on ignition timing brought out to be a video on its own right. That content's actually buried inside a much longer video on doing the timing for a Tahatsu video, so I figure I was much better off pulling it out and having it as a separate video so people can search for it and find that, and if people ask questions, I can sort of point them to it. So, so I'll put that video up over the next couple of days, but it's just a bit of an extra in between the main weekly videos. All right, well, take care, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.